Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out E-shape dominant seventh chords, often just called seventh chords. Really, really useful sound for the blues, folk, country. You hear them a lot in pop stuff as well, like the Beatles. They're a really, really great sound. They've got a lot of tension and they go somewhere. So the thing about dominant seventh chords is they've got some movement. So you often hear like this sort of sound. If I do A7, it wants to go to D. If I do A, you can still go to D, but it doesn't have that same pull. You sound. It, it's very, you often hear it in classical music, this thing called a cadence. Dominant seventh major. It's, this sound, it's got a lot of finality to it when you use it in that way in this perfect cadence. But dominant seventh chord used a lot in blues. Really, really useful chord. Now, it's the same idea that we had with the major to minor. We lifted off the second finger. For the dominant seventh chord, we lift off the little finger. So let's start off with our A major bar chord shape. You should be very familiar with this one by now. And all we're going to do is lift off the little finger to get this fourth string under the bar. Now, it's exactly the same problems that we had when we went from major to minor. We could use the little fi uh, second figure there to support the first finger a bit to try and get that extra string ring out. Often when we're going to the dominant seventh, you might find that this note is not ringing out clearly. So again, there are a few things that might be causing that note to ring out, not to ring out clearly. The first one could be, again, the bar position. So when you go from the major, yeah, I'm all good, lift off little finger. Try that note. If it's not ringing out, here's the things it could be. One, bar placement. So if you happen to have caught a flabby bit, particularly like this little join here between your first finger, uh, those, I don't know what you call it, the segments of your first finger. If you get that join right on there, no matter how hard you press, you won't be able to get that note ringing out. So you might have to just jig first finger up or down just a little bit. Seems to be fine for me. Uh, this note also can get muted by the underneath of the third finger here, so make sure that, again, you're just bringing that part of your hand up to make sure your third finger is nice and round and not touching that string. And it could also be now the second finger. If you've been putting it up a bit high to keep it out of the way of the second string, the tip of that one could be muting that, that uh, fourth string as well. So a little bit of time here with this one. Major, lift off the little finger. Checking the notes. If it's muted, what is it? What's causing that? Is it the bar or is it the third finger? Let's get. Oh, there's third finger. It was in that case. It was third finger and the bar. I'm just trying to deliberately like put it down a little bit sloppy. Okay, the bar again. If you've been thinking of keeping your bar nice and round, as I suggested for the major chords, now we're having to really press down a little bit with that knuckle. So that that knuckle right there is going to have to press down to get that fourth string. At this point, it becomes a little bit about where you're putting your attention and what part of the finger you want to press down. And again, it's the economy of, uh, of pressure, of energy that you're having to put into it. Because if you're playing just straight major chords, you don't need to be thinking about pressing that part of your first finger down. So it would be wasted energy thinking that way. But now, if we're going to do from here, when I go to the seventh, it's very subtle, but my first finger is changing. It's going from being rounded now the dominant seventh, it's very, I don't even know if you'll spot on the camera, but it's just going from there rounded. The, the knuckle is kind of changing where it's going in order to get that string ringing out. Now, there's another option, which I kind of feel like most of the time sounds better. And the reason that it sounds better is to do with this thing called the movement of the harmony, the voice movement. If I'm doing here the A7, this note for me wants to go there for the D. So there's this other option is instead of just lifting your little finger up, you put it down three frets above the bar on the second string. Now, this is actually an octave of this note, it's the same note, still the flat seven. But now, particularly if it's a resolving dominant seventh, i.e. it's going A7 to D, get that nice da, 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 movement and it is just that simple you can so for a you can have a7 with just lifting off a little finger or you can choose to put it down three frets higher on the second string 
it's an optional one. Now, what you might find when you do that is that the third finger lays over a bit and you end up muting the uh, fourth string. And it doesn't matter because now we've still got our dominant seventh chord. Now I know that that fourth string is not ringing out. That's okay, you, I can make it ring out if I press harder, change that angle of my first finger. But I don't need to, as long as I've got that sound involved in the chord, it's okay. So a little bit it's a choice for you, whether you just work on the dominant seventh that way, or whether you work on the dominant seventh and replace the little finger down three frets higher, completely up to you. But I've got a confession to make, and that is I don't tend to use the dominant seventh chord like this very often. I find it a bit cumbersome and a bit big, and most times when I watch the guitar players that I really love, they don't play the dominant seventh chord like this either. Sometimes they do. But more often, when you're playing a dominant seventh, particularly if you're playing a blues, it might end up being a bit smaller, meaning having less notes. So I would tend to play A7 like this. So now I'm only playing three notes. I'm not even using a bar chord anymore, but I'm going to teach it here because it is a more practical version of the dominant seventh chord. You could use any combination of these fingers that you like. I've got the root note. I'm not playing the fifth string at all. I'm playing the flat seven, this note that we want for the dominant seventh, and I'm playing the major third. That's it. Okay, so it's almost like there would be that basic version here, but we're leaving out this note. So we're just playing those three notes, and you can use fingers one, two, and three, one, two, and four, or two, three, and four. I think, uh, you probably wouldn't use that fingering, but any of the other ones are fine. This little one, for, to my ears, is much better for stuff like blues. You want to learn to mute all of the other strings. So my little finger is laying down, my first finger is touching those thinner strings. You probably won't be able to help muting the, uh, this fifth string. But the thinner strings you need to get muted out. Now, if we were going to play, say, a blues in G, we've got a G chord, C, back to G, back to C, back to G. I'm going to change the fingering just so you can see that other fingering in action. Up to D, C, G. So getting used to moving that little shape around is also a nice little trick there. It is still using the same shape. It's based off of this G7. We're just changing the fingering around depending on what fingering you feel most comfortable with. We're still following the same root note. And I would recommend that you have a go at moving around the big shape as well. So the same thing, G, C, So we just played there a blues in G using the full bar chord shapes. Oftentimes in those situations, I'm not even that bothered about getting all of the notes clear. And I know that's terrible for me to say as a teacher, because I should be telling you, you should be aiming for all of the notes clear. And, and you should be, really. But quite often, particularly in a bluesy sort of thing like that, you don't need all of those notes. It might even be a little bit too much. Getting a good feel, getting your strumming nice, making it feel good is actually far more important than if every note in the chord is coming out clearly. So. What you want to find is at this stage of your playing is this balance between doing things exactly right and doing things that feel good. And any, any day of the week, I'm going to prefer listening to somebody who's got a nice feel, who's enjoying what they're playing, than the guy's like playing every note perfectly but really panicking and it feels all stiff and like disjointed. It's, you want to try and find thing, make things easy for yourself because you want your music to feel nice and relaxed. If you want to get into doing more technical things or you, you're picking out notes individually, so if you're going... If you've got a dominant here, you need to be making sure that all of those notes are ringing out nice and clear because you're picking them out individually. So think a little bit about the place, what the vibe is of the song, and you've got to figure out how much effort you're going to put into practicing these particular chords. Now, on that note, 
again, we're going to have two five minute slots for your practice. The first one will be working on your bar chord. So you should be working on your major, your minor and your dominant seventh chords. Obviously, the emphasis is not going to be on the dominant seventh chords because that's what we've just learned. So really making sure that you've got those ones sounding nice. Trying the version where you just lift off your little finger doing the version where you add your little finger down on three frets above the bar on the second string. And then you also might want to try out my little three note version as well, which I think is, you know, a pretty practically useful version to check out. Your second five minute practice slot of playing songs, really good thing to be doing with the dominant seventh chord is working on your 12 bar blues. So you could be practicing a 12 bar blues in the key of G, which obviously uses the chords G7, C7 and D7. You could be practicing a 12 bar blues in the key of C, which would use the chords C7, F7 and G7. If you want to be really clever, you might want to try doing something like a B flat blues. That'll put you a testing because that's also got an E flat seventh chord up at the eleventh fret. That's going to be a, a pretty gnarly one. Be a nice one to get a little bit of a jazzy thing on, uh, going from the B flat, E flat, B flat, E flat, to B flat, then to F. E flat, biggest jump ever. B flat, F. There are loads of different songs that you can associate with the blues, loads of different tempos. It's a real fun one to add into the mix there is working on your dominant seventh chords using a 12 bar blues. So that would be what I'd recommend. But also maybe check out some Beatles songs or whatever that have got dominant seventh chords in it. Go back to the songs that you learned when you were learning your open position dominant seventh chords. Check out those songs and go, which, were, which of these songs were the ones that I really enjoy doing? OK, let's have a go at doing them with bar chords now. So try and incorporate them into your repertoire. They're not going to be used as much as your major and your minor chords. So again, you really want to be real solid with those ones. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to talk a little bit more about understanding note function, which is super important. It'll make a lot of this kind of, it'll gel it into place and give you a bit of an understanding of the framework of the guitar and how, how all of the bits fit together. So I'm hoping that you'll join me for that. Really hope you're enjoying this series. If you happen to be over on YouTube, always appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell if you want to get notified when I've got new lessons. Slap me a like. Also, always appreciate it. Let me know in the comments how you're doing and don't forget to recommend me to a friend if you happen to know somebody who's learning guitar. Really hope you're enjoying the course so far and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You'll take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.